Hello you gorgeous individuals and welcome to the Spurred On review of 2015. We are going to review everything Tottenham Hotspur. Well not everything, just the key moments. <laughs> yeah. All of the best things that have happened throughout the year that have made this such a great year for us as Spurs fans. And I think for Tottenham as a, as a club, what do you reckon? Yeah, I think it's been a good year. Let's kick it off. What's the first thing? Oh, well, where else do you want to start? New Year's Day 2015. Oh yeah. White Hart Lane, mm. 5.30 in the evening. It's cold, it's dark, everyone's a bit hungover. And then the magic happened. Oh no, it did. It really magic just came happened. across. No one thought we would win that ga game, no. let alone no. kind of destroy Chelsea, them. Chelsea were flying. We yeah. were sort of all right. No, I mean, three one up at half time, people. Three one up. It's crazy. It was like a dream. It was. It literally was. And it, although we conceded goals, I would still call it a battering because we just had a bad defence. Oh, it was a battering. We Joe, had a bad defence. Jose Mourinho was not a happy man He there. was not. And I think it was, I think a lot of people put that down as the turning point in Chelsea's season. After that, they became very defensive and weren't flying like they was in the first half of the season. But Harry Kane got a brace and it just, just pushed him on, didn't it? He just went crazy after that, scoring all kinds of goals. Absolutely just amazing. The performance, like, from the front to back was just incredible. Um, to start off the year like that, it gave us so much confidence going forward. Yeah. Everyone knew that last season was going to be a bit of a work in progress under Poch, yeah. but I think that was the moment where we go, we're so on the right track Yeah, here. I mean, and from one week to kind of another week against Chelsea, it kind of went a bit sour, didn't it? Yeah. When we played Fiorentina oh. away in the Europa League and then we had to play Chelsea three days later, which was always going to be tough because they're three days apart, one's all the way in Italy, then we got to play at Wembley. You know, the fatigue was kind of settling in. It was our week of woe. Like, I know we said this is going to yeah. be like happy things in 2015, but I think that was the massive reality check for us. We had this opportunity. It was like we can get through to the uh, quarterfinals of the uh, Europa League. We could win the League Cup. This could just be amazing. Yeah. And then we lost both. And in do you know who I blame for Fiorentina? Do you know who I blame? Bobby. You remember Bobby? You remember Bobby? Saudado, the guy you lot love? Well, did he square the ball to Chadley? No, he didn't. And no, that, I think didn't. that was kind of the nail yeah, in the no, casket yeah. for him. I know, I know. And I think, in fairness, I think that was also the moment that pretty much all of us, even even me as a Bobby lover, yeah. kind of gave up on him. Gave I think up. that was a bit of despair. And then obviously, you know, going to Wembley, incredible experience. It's always a great day yeah. out. Was you there as well? I was there. It was so unfortunate. We made so much more noise than Chelsea. We were so up for it. And then they kind of just got their tactics right. They, they defended yeah. and then Ericsson hit the ball with a free kick and we just couldn't really score. I think it was, again, that kind of game that sort of showed that we were still very much a developing side. Yeah. Like most of the lads who played in that team, that was like their first major final. Yeah. Some it was like their first appearance at Wembley. Like, it, you know, you could tell that it... They were quite ready, and yeah. I think the naivety showed. Like when they we conceded the goal just before half time, yeah. and you sort of saw their heads drop a little bit. Again, it was that sort of reality check to kind it of go, it, we're, "We're going, we're going places, but you know, we're not there yet. Let's not get too carried." What's away. annoying is I'm, I'm going to say it's a good learning experience for for the young team, but Massively. a lot of those players aren't even in this this team anymore. <laughs> the likes of Benelab, Mason, Chadley, like a lot of them aren't even starting anymore. I know. Well, this so is that experience is kind of like. Yeah. Gonna sit with them on the bench. Well, this is something we're gonna come on to later, isn't it? About how much the team has changed. But yeah. I mean, I want to talk about something that it's not technically didn't happen in a Spurs shirt, but I think we all felt it because he's one of our own. We did. Harry Kane, mm. his England debut, scoring after coming on. I Was mean, it like within a few minutes? Oh my god, yeah. Made it look effortless. Oh my god, I mean, I could not have been prouder. And I know, I remember yeah. Twitter just exploding it did, with the it reaction. Did. Like, couldn't be prouder. It was like he was like my son or something. I like, absolutely loved oh. it. So great. So He's scored great. a few goals since as well for just, England. Just, just a few. Just, just a few. few. He's on his way to beat Rooney's record. Yeah, I said it. He'll do it. <laughs> He'll do it. He's got 10 years. He can play to 32 and he will break that record. But Harry again, Kane. I think it had been a while, with the exception of Townsend, it had been a while since we'd had like Spurs players in the England team that we could really feel like yeah, Ugh, you know, really uh, lead the line, and he's he's the one now. It's just amazing, and obviously now you look at like Deli Ali's followed yeah. in his footsteps. You know, we've obviously got Mason's exactly. in there, Walker's in there. I mean, it, you know, but I mean Harry, that was it was just like you know the fairy tale season, proud moment. Oh, so much. Speaking one of, of uh, Deli Ali, oh. I mean, literally, we signed him from NK Dons League One football. He scored a lot of goals, but obviously it's a it's a massive step up to come Huge. to the Premier League. But before he even got to the Premier League, we saw him playing the Audi Cup over in Munich. And he was very impressive against Real Madrid, wasn't he? I remember when he when Poch started him against Real Madrid, I remember thinking, what is he doing? Seriously? Real Madrid, Modric and the likes Bale, in that midfield? Cruz, Are you kidding me? The boy was fearless. fearless. I've never been so impressed by somebody he who was. I'd hardly seen. I'd seen a bit of him for MK Dons, but I'd hardly seen play at that kind of level, even though it was a pre-season tournament. David versus Goliath. Absolutely. David versus Goliath. What about Delhi versus Goliath? Yes. 
He slayed them, even though we lost. He slayed them. <laughs> Megged Modric, Megged Cruz in quick succession. He's yeah. just a baller, isn't he? Why is he so fearless? He's. I, he, I don't know. <laughs> like, he's so... I wish I could tell you. It's just. It's. A, it's so great to see someone just come in and literally just play. I love a player Not that. Think about it. I love play. a player that has like an arrogance on the pitch, but. They're very humble off the pitch, and that's that's what comes across with oh, him. He loves loving, to just we're loving him off the pitch. He's loving just he's him. just playing football, and he's really enjoying it right now. And it's it's good to see Dele Ali, and he's and he's literally from that game progressed into a player we kind of knew he could be. It's still very early, yeah. but he's performing, he's scoring goals, and he's he's a fixture in our team. He's yeah. not going anywhere. No, and speaking of fixtures and people not going anywhere, and uh, that particular area of the pitch, I'll bring you to Eric Dyer. Yes. Now we'll talk about the transfer window from the summer in a minute. Um, I'm going to put that to one side. But I mean, everyone was screaming very much about how we desperately needed a proper central defensive mid and how yep. if we didn't sign one, everything was going to go tits up this season. Yeah. Poch in pre-season puts Eric Dyer there. Everybody goes, are you kidding me? This is ridiculous. Did he, plan it? Did he plan it or was it a bit of fortune? I think he 100% planned it. He saw something. In training. In training, in Eric Dyer that none of us had seen. And my God, has he been proved he right. He said, that boy, that boy there, he's got a centre half. Wow. He is destined to be a defensive midfielder. He's Roy Keane. Yeah. Reincarnated, even though Roy Keane's still alive. He saw it! He saw it! He did. He saw it and he's been so right. I mean, Dyer has been absolutely one of our best and most consistent performances, oh, he has. performers this season. And it's almost like we're playing with three centre-halves at times because yeah. he just protects them two at the back. Even he's, though they're doing so well, he really plays a key role in helping them. He's another one, and I hate, I don't want to draw comparisons with Ledley King per se, but it's the footballing intelligence. It's actually knowing when to push forward, knowing when to sit back. That's that relationship he's developing with Ali as well. It's just, you know, we talked about the fact that last season, Mason and Bensleb were our absolute go-tos. Yeah. Couldn't get them out of the team. And they were playing well. It's not like they suddenly had a bad downturn in form. They just got injured. But these guys, it's like gone to a whole different New level. level. They it's have, amazing. they have. And the thing is with Dyer as well, he, he possesses an attacking threat from set pieces. He can score goals. He scored a flipping volley against Man City from about 20 yards out. Love it. Love it. It's good times at the lane. What can we say? But let's talk about the transfer window. Summer transfer oh. window, another moment in 2015. Oh. Another sorrow one for us. We did a bit of good business. We got Deli Ali early. We got out of Verald after a little tug with Southampton for him. But we tried to secure a man by the name of Saido Berahino and it didn't quite work out, did it? It's not even just that it didn't work out. It just was really embarrassing, wasn't it? The entire saga, the way it was all conducted, it all got very public and Classic very Classic Levy, really. Yeah, it wasn't Levy's finest hour and it was a, you know... But you know what it is? I feel like Levy was just trying to do to West Brom what kind of Real Madrid did to us with Modric and Bale. Not give all the money up front, kind of negotiate a price, yeah, pay it down the line. Whoa, whoa, whoa. There's not giving all the money up front and there's giving them five million quid. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know? Didn't we wait like two years for money for Modric though from Real Madrid? Yeah, but that's standard. In they fairness. strong armed Insta us. No, instalments is a fairly standard thing in yeah. transfer fees nowadays. Mm. But it's you know what you do with the upfront payment and how you. Very disrespectful it. towards and Jeremy it was, Pease. It was really disrespectful, and you know, in fairness, West Brom. I've said this before. Did not cover cover themselves in glory either. Peace going public with it, issuing all those yeah, statements. Yeah, it was just very was not absolutely very sour. Not On top of that, you know, Tony Pulis conceded that Saido Berahino wanted to go. Yeah. He was prepared to let him go. Absolutely. Berahino was looking forward to going, and and I think everyone pretty much thought it was a done deal. And the way they handled it. it was almost like he was a pawn on the chessboard yeah. just getting caught in between which wasn't really fair it was really unfortunate and as I said I don't think we particularly came out of it January well. do you think we could go for him again or is that damaged is it severed I kind of feel like it's severed I'd be I'm they're not playing him surprised. they're not playing him they're not playing him because they clearly I think do want to sell him but I can't see like Jeremy Peace I think is pretty much as stubborn a man as Daniel Levy I can't see him after cock the, fight. The, the yeah well but we got the cock rule so don't try and <laughs> cock fight with people with the cock rule yeah you cock I can't I can't see it happening and in fairness Berahino's form like I said not playing yeah. not exactly been good mm. could we do better could do alright let's move on to this season the resurgence of Lamella and Dembele, where has it come from? Hey, look, everyone knows I've always been a massive Lamella yeah, fan. Yeah. I've always said that he, the boy's going to do it, the boy's going to do it. You liked the haircuts, it. didn't you? I did love the and haircuts. And they were awful. I love the haircuts. We knew, do you know what it is? <laughs> you know what it is? Anyone that watched him over at Roma knew he had the potential. He was very good. And then we saw the glimpses of it, the Rabona. He, he possesses the quality, but we just felt like, was he physical enough for the Prem? Could he give all of that kind of hard-working effort that Poch wants? And he's delivered. He has. I mean, the, has. Thing, the thing was, you could see last season as well, he would get very... He wanted to do too much as soon as he had the ball. He would try and, like, do 17 tricks when maybe only one would do and then a pass because he was obviously so, like, feeling the weight of his price tag yeah. that he felt like he really wanted to impress, he really wanted to do something. This season, 
the weirdest thing that we had is that because Harry Kane initially started off quite quiet, wasn't scoring that many goals, and all of a sudden everyone jumped on him, and we'll talk about him again in a minute. Um, the brilliant thing from Lamella's point of view is it took all the spotlight off him, it took the pressure off yeah. him, and all of a sudden he started playing like he didn't have to think about it. He started playing yeah. with the natural talent that he's got, not trying so hard, not trying to force it. And at the same time, he's got more physical, he's got stronger, he's much harder to get off the ball now. And also, let's face it, the boy likes a bit of a rumble. He does like a bit of a rumble. He, he loves a yellow card, doesn't he? A bit Love of cheese. It. He loves Love a bit it. of dairy. And to be honest, I know that, you know, don't want to advocate our players getting booked all the time, but I'd much rather see someone go in there and, you know... Mm. Yeah, why not? not? Especially against rivals. Absolutely. Like Arsenal, get stuck in. I love it. I mean, when he came off and Son came on, Son didn't really off. That's although, a whole different story. Although, in fairness, if he had got brought off against Arsenal, he was going to get sent off the way Probably. he was he was going to see red. He saw the red shirts before he might see red. No, but Lamella's been really good. And I think just having Poch as kind of like a father figure, yeah. Argentinian. Absolutely. You no, know, they can have little words together, sit down, have a bit of Argentinian tea and discuss tactics. Argentinian tea? Hey, they do a good tea. They do also they? do a good steak. Go to Gal if you've never been, all right? Oh, so what's yeah. the next point? Uh, well, I was going to say, we're talking about resurgence of players. We've talked about him in Spurberts. We've talked about him, I think, quite a few times this week. Musa Dem. Mm, mm, mm. Look what happens when you play a player, play a play. I can't get that out. Play a player. Play a, oh, you confuse me, play a player. <laughs> in their correct position, watch him go. I mean, seriously, last season was so frustrating yep. with Dembele. We got so annoyed with him. It just felt like he was doing nothing. He would run around in circles, pass the ball sideways. It just wasn't happening. And the and passes he, weren't even great when no, he did it. No, looked like a shadow of the player that we had bought from Fulham in the first place. This season, Posh has pushed him further forward. But that's the key, because when, when he played over in Belgium, he was a striker. He came over to Fulham, was an attacking midfielder. And then we all of our other managers just played him deep, 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 deep. I mean, Sherwood didn't even play him. And that's why you're unemployed. <laughs> that's why you're unemployed, looking like a hobo. With your beard, cut your beard. I know it's flipping Christmas, but you're not Santa. Cut it. Don't Sorry. need to talk about him. Move on. You don't need to Move talk on. about him. Yeah, let's just... Move on. Anyway, yeah, to Dembele, the left, the left. absolutely just revelation this season. He and he is the strongest man in football. He you is. can't take the ball off not, him. Not at his feet, never. Ever. It's not happening. He just, it, gl- he just drifts past people. Like, and drop like, the shoulder, yeah, gone. gone. Off he goes. That's like, it, you're in Tesco's, and like, he's play, at the door. Players kind of ping off him. He's just like, yeah, out of the way. Doing well. Out of the way. It's just, honestly, it's amazing. But I mean, we're talking about amazing performances this season and just people generally. Like, we have to. We can't. Round it off. Who? Gone. The man. The man who is one of our own. He's one of our own. Oh. He's one of our own. He is one of our own. He Ouch. is one of our own. Hey, Harry Kane, Harry Kane. I'm really right, sorry. That's it. I'm really it's sorry about this. The remix. You know, sign it up. Official top five. Yes, yeah, stop Christmas now. number one. Stop now. Harry Kane. Harry, the man. So much for the, oh, he's a one-season wonder. Oh, whatever. Two-season wonder. How about ten-season wonder? You ever thought about that? You ever thought about that? Do you know what the brilliant thing was about Harry? Even if he, even when he wasn't scoring, he was still working so hard and he wasn't hiding. He was still going in. He was still getting chances. Mm. Wasn't converting them. But still, there was never a point where you like, this boy's gone AWOL. You knew it was going to come good for him. Of course. And I think the only downer on, on, on his year is the fact that he wasn't up for Ballon d'Or. I mean, I think it's a travesty, well, actually, to be honest. Well, actually, he did make the 59 nah, man short. I know, but I think he should have been top three. <laughs> like, I, I genuinely do. I, I don't know what's going on. Like, He should have been up for Ballon d'Or. 22 years of age, was from Walthamstow, was playing in the resis. Show some respect! <laughs> I mean, in all seriousness, his 2015 has actually been cheesily the stuff that dreams are made of. Like, as a football fan, mm. that's the kind of story you want to see. And I'm what? hearing through the grapevine as well that he's on the on the brink of a 70 grand contract. 70 grand Come a on, week. Harry. 70 grand a week! <laughs> Get in there, Harry, you deserve it. <laughs> Buy your missus a flipping Aston Martin. Why not? Do you know what's fab as well about Harry is that all fans from other clubs love him as well. I've had so many mates who are not Tottenham fans who said to me, oh, do you know what? It's really good to see Harry Kane doing well. I can't help it. I like him. They like him. It, it reminds me of like me playing five aside. I'm like, yeah, this is brilliant. And we can't also not mention the fact 100 games, 100th appearance for Spurs against Southampton. Yeah. Boy scores a worldie. Well, he okay. Does. A worldie helped by some really bad defending, yeah. but still. Does well. Anyway, guys, this has been the 2015 review of Tottenham Hotspur. Let us know in the comments below what you thought about what we discussed. Is there anything we missed out that you think we should have included? If you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop it a like. Follow us on Twitter at Spurdo on TV. And we'll see you in the new year. Keep it casual. How's it going, guys? It is me, Craig Mitch. And we are going to do a video for the top five Spurs pundits.